is Jeff, the host of The Gridiron. All right, all right, all right, baby. Hey, welcome to The Gridiron. If you can give this video a thumbs up or share this video, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. If you subscribe to my channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. If not, please go down below, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon. That way, next time I go live or if I put a video out, you'll be notified. And it's free of charge. <laughs> it's free of charge. But if you are subscribed to my channel, thank you, thank you, thank you. Also in the description box below. Top link in the description box takes you to my membership page. If you want to help support my channel out, it would mean so much to me, and I thank you in advance. I got three different membership levels. Each one has their own little perks to them. So once again, if you want to help support my channel out, it would mean so much to me. And also, a little ways down in the description box, there's an additional link. takes you to my Facebook group. It's called the New York Giants, the Gridiron. It's my Facebook group. Basically, if I'm alive and breathing, and if I have internet access, I'm putting stuff in this group darn near 365. We have over 9,200 members in the group, and it's doing simply marvelous, might I add. It's called the New York Giants, the Gridiron. It's my Facebook group. Please join. You will not be dissatisfied. I promise. All right, guys. Well, I, you know, it's, it is, um, you know, one thing what do we got here. All right. Here we go. You know, it's yeah, the, the, the Thursday. I mean, it's it's like the thing that stinks is when the weekend rolls around, right? And then you're like, you got you got like these withdrawals kind of going on. What you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> where my giants at, you know? Um, and, but then you gotta wait, you know, a whole nother week for them to come back again. It's it's really weird. I mean, apparently the same thing happened last year, and I'm just I just I don't know. I'm just finding this rather rather shocking. Um, they said, and, and I, I I didn't remember this, but apparently last year I think they said on Thursday night Detroit went to Green Bay. Then on Thanksgiving, Green Bay went to Detroit, and it's the same thing here. I mean, I just, I just, I, I don't. Why are we playing the same team two times on Thursday in the same year? I mean, it, that makes no sense whatsoever. It is what it is. It's just weird. Why are we playing the Cowboys on Thursday night, and then we're playing them on Thursday, kind of nightish kind of in November on Thursday and Thanksgiving. Why we I don't, I'm, I'm a little lost on that one, but it is what it is. The nice thing is, is that if the Giants were to win, <laughs> um, you, know, you know, they got nice 10 days off. We're going to go over the injuries, you know. There's not a, uh, I'm going to Dan Deardorff you here. There's not a plethora of injuries, but hopefully Right, if we can come out of this game unscathed, unlike we did last year at home against the Cowboys, um, you know, the 10 days that we have would really be be huge, really, really, really be huge for the Giants. Now, you, you know, you hear all this talking about, you know, all these reporters, you know, they're trying to ask sexy Dexine Dable and everybody. Oh, yeah, remember last year, you guys sucked. Remember, you got blown out, you know, 40 you know, it's a different year, right? It's different teams, right? The Giants are pretty much about what they were last. You know, I mean, record, but you know, record wise, because they were one and two. But last, I mean, but the the Cowboys not quite the same team as they were last year. They let a lot of guys go in free agency, but they almost have to, right? I mean, you realize when they sign. Um, Micah Parsons to his contract between Parsons, ABCD, and uh, Dak. I don't know, 60, about 120, 125 million dollars a year for three guys. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to build a real, <laughs> I mean, 
And that's one thing that Tom Brady used to do. Tom Brady was like, um, you know, um, one of the reasons why he, you know, I, I was always kind of like, you know, wondering like why Tom Brady has like 712 Super Bowl rings. It's like, well, he goes to like to Tampa Bay and this, that. Why is he only making like, I don't know, whatever it was like at the time, like 25 million, got, or third, whatever it was. Like, why you got all these other guys making so much more money than him? Well, one day he doesn't need it. But, you know, he, he needs a team around him. He can't do it by himself. And the greedy, greedier you are, like in Dak Prescott's, I mean, it's like, you know, everybody was like, you know, uh, I'm making 50. Oh, uh, next guy, I want to make 50 grand. So, so the next guy up, whether he deserves it or not, he's the next one up. So he, I want 50 grand. So, he, so they give him 51. The next guy come, who, who, who's, who's due, I want 52. You know what I mean? So, you know, so he makes 52 and then 53 and then 54 and then 55. So Dak somehow went from 50. So somebody got paid 55. A couple guys got paid. But well, Dak at 60. I mean, uh, Dak, can you can you do this for me? Just hold them up there. And let, let me see how many Super Bowl rings you got. How, how many NFC Championship games you got? Uh, rings you got? How many, I mean, yeah. So you know, as I said, see the greedier greedier you are, yeah, you know, the less of a team you can have around you. And there's a good chance, you know, it's time, you know, they're, they're going to start finding that out. Because you only, as Jerry Jones says, there's almost so much pie to go around. As Jerry Jones said about a year or so ago, there's only, almost so, only so much of a pie to go around. So when Dak is basically taking a quarter of the salary cap, now I get it, he's not making 60 million this year. Yeah, I don't know if there was a sign-in bonus and whatever, but his average salary is going to be sixty million dollars a year, right? So I said, so when you know, there's only so much money left to go around for you know, I mean, unless you're like Howie Roseman, right, and and you push all the chips in the middle of the table and you just start bringing everybody in and you sign everybody to huge contracts and all, you overpay everybody basically. And, uh, but it's, eh, it don't matter, maybe. I just put 312 void years on your kind. Don't matter, man. I give everybody $3 trillion. I got 800 million void years on the end of your contract. I'll be paying you off of, you know, you know so. But if you're like most GMs who don't want to kick, you know, uh, uh, four or five trillion dollars down the road, you know, like, like Howie Roseman does, you know. Most, most GMs want to try to keep the control of things, you know, the money situation. They don't want to do stuff like that, you know. So, I mean, uh, uh, you know, there's only so much money to go around, you know. So, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to sign ABCD, right, and, and, and DAC. I mean, it's like about $90 million for two guys. Uh, how many other guys are you going to plan on bringing in? You, you really can't because you don't have any freaking money. And I said that when Micah Parsons is going to want to get paid, you got three guys who are taking up probably about $120 million on average, you know, a year for the salary cap. It's like, whew, wow. Good luck. God bless, brother. I don't, I don't see good times in the future for the Cowboys. I can tell you that much. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're not. Uh, um, I drank the Kool Aid last year. I, I, w I was hitting a crack pipe and everything. And I actually was stupid enough to pick the Giants to beat the Cowboys. I said it was going to be close. I said it was going to be close. I don't know what I said. I can't remember last year. I'm, I'm happy I remember what my name is when I wake up in the morning. But I said, man, I think the Giants would win maybe 27, 24, 24, 23, something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I think we, you know, you know. Of course, I did. I don't think anybody saw forty to nothing. But I mean, since that time, the Cowboys have definitely taken a step back. And I, I don't want to say the Giants have taken a huge step forward, but I think the Giants, you know, um, have, have, you know, have taken a step forward in certain areas, right? Um, you know, we, we lost. We did lose some with Saquon. Right? We got Motor back there, who's doing a decent job, but. But our tight ends took a little step back, right? You know, we don't have Waller. 
Our, our offensive line has gotten better. Our wide receivers have gotten better. Uh, Daniel Jones, if we can give him some time, you know, has not looked too bad. Uh, our, our edge rushers are better. Um, you know, we lost Xavier McKinney. I like our cornerbacks, but we're going to go over the injuries in a, in a, in a few minutes here. You know, the, the, the linebackers, we still got a Karakay McFadden. You know what I mean? So we, we've gotten better in some areas. We got worse in some areas, you know. And obviously some areas maybe we kind of stayed the same. But, you know, every game is different. If, if, if we played that game last year, week one last year at Giants Stadium, does that mean the Giants would have won five and lost? No, probably not. The Cowboys were a very good team. Out of ten times – Maybe the Giants would have won one or two of them. I mean, it, it just the way it started off and all that. Um, you know, would it, would it, would it, out of those other nine games, if they played 10 times, if they, the other nine games, would it, they have been 40 to nothing? No, I doubt it. That was just like, you know, one of those perfect storm kind of things where just everything could have gone wrong for the Giants did go wrong. But I mean, as I said, it's a different year. You know, as I said, if they played that game again the next very next day, the Cowboys might have won 27-17. Right? Then if they played it the next day, the Cowboys might have won 27 to 7, 20. Or right, then the next day the Giants might have won it. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know, it's different year, different players, different situations. They're gonna be different plays being called, the ball's gonna bounce different ways. Who knows? Maybe the Giants go and, and 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 block a field goal, and one of their guys starts running down. Boom! Pops a hamstring out, and he walks off to the side of the field. His season's done. I mean, maybe some bad things start happening the Cowboys' way, right? I mean, they've beaten us thirteen out of fourteen times. Last fourteen, the last time we did beat him, Andy Dalton was the was the uh, wasn't Dak Prescott. So we haven't beaten Dak Prescott since twenty sixteen. Right, his rookie season. That's what we won for. That's what, um, that was um, Victor Cruz's last touchdown reception for the Giants. He it was, I think, it was the game winner. We, it was twenty to nineteen, I believe. We won. He caught one from Eli. Did the last salsa of his career in the end zone. Um, but we beat him twice that year, and and since then, right, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Right, yeah. So those last seven seasons, we played them fourteen times. Right, we've lost thirteen out of fourteen. Somewhere it's got to end. Does it mean it's going to end tomorrow night? Of course not. Does it mean you know? But somewhere along the line, it, you know, it, it'll end. Somewhere along the line, things will start turning a little bit. I say, um, if you go back to you know to the sixties and um the, the 70s you know i mean the the what was it 17 from 70 to 79 10 seasons cowboys beat us 17 out of 20 times giants won three times in the 70s against the cowboys one at, at home was in 1970 so that meant from 1971 to 1979 against the Cowboys at home, the Giants lost from 71 to 79, nine years in a row. Every year we lost to the Cowboys. We beat the Cowboys two times in Dallas in the 70s. Seven, uh, 72 and 74, I believe, we beat the Cowboys in Dallas. On a, a, basically 75, 6, 7, 8, 9, five years in a row, we couldn't beat the Cowboys at all. And a lot, and, and a lot of times in the uh, mid to late, 60s, we couldn't beat the Cowboys either. Then things started turning around a little bit, right? The cow, uh, the, the Cowboys, you know, it, it, it were very good in the early 80s, but then they started taking a dip down, right, toward, toward uh, 89, right, where they were just pathetic, right? So the Giants started, you know, winning some games, and uh, Johnson came around coaching them, and, of course, then the Cowboys started taking off once again. You know, so it, it, it goes up and down, up and down. Unfortunately for the with the Cowboys and the Giants, a lot of times when a team's been on the ride, it's been the Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboys just have had our number ever since we played them in 19, started playing them in 1960. I mean, you know, just from 60 to the Cowboys have just for the majority of the time have had our number. 
But I mean, somewhere along the line, the streak's going to end. Now the Cowboys are. Uh, 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 look at you know some some of these these their, their stats here. I mean, Dak's leading the league, I think, in, in passing yards. But that's because you know, their the running game stinks. Their run defense stinks. Their run defense. Uh, they give up five and five point four yards a carry. They average three point six yards a carry. Right. Uh, they average 73 yards a game running the ball. They're giving up 185 yards a game running the ball. Um, let's see, rushing. Where have we got touchdowns? They've given up eight rushing touchdowns so far. I mean, they're they're running backs. Dowdle. But uh, he averages 3.8 yards a carry. Ezekiel Elliott, 3.3. And the Deucer, Deuce Vaughn, 2.9 yards a carry. I mean, you know, they, they, they have a very hard time running the ball. And they have a very hard time stopping the ball. And that does not mean, obviously, the Giants are just going to line up and run the ball every, every, because you can't do that. But I think if, if, yeah. The, the thing is, is what you want to do is you want to you want to start hitting them early with the run, but you have to stay in the game. You start you start falling behind like against the Vikings, 21 6, 28 say what in the third, fourth quarter, and all that, you can't run the ball. You gotta pass. That's where the Cowboys have some strength there. They got good pass rush. Um, that you know, once again, we're going to go over some injuries here. This is this is a both teams are kind of like a little, little, a little lacking in the cornerback position this game coming up. But I mean, it would behoove the Giants to try to you know to do two things: run the ball and try to you know keep running the ball as, as much as they can. Don't go back, you know, don't. Throw three passes in a row and get off the field and punt or whatever. If you if you if it's one two three punt, make one of them a run. Very very important. Um, and if you can get a couple first downs, you got to get some runs in there. You got to you know, you got to run the ball. That's one. And then two, you have to stay within reach. If you're down, whatever. I mean, last year we got blown out, absolutely annihilated. Both games, it was it was horrible, absolutely horrible. But you have to stay in the game for the run running game to you know take effect. Because if you can run the ball and, and start you know upping the dose of runs in the third and fourth quarter, that's when those bigger runs start happening. Because the other team's defense starts getting tired. And that's when those two one two yarders in the first quarter turn into two and three yard gains in the second quarter. They turn into three, four, five yards in the third quarter, and then they go three, four, five plus in the last quarter. That's when you can maybe break one, right? Like what the Giants did against the Browns last week. Like the last one that Singletary had went for forty three yards. So you have to. Yeah, you got to keep that that the the run. You know, got to keep that, keep doing that. Um, I said their their running attack stinks. Um, you got to get pressure on Dak. Now I, I saw a stat. I think he was one of the worst quarterbacks this season under pressure. We're being blitzed a lot of time. I mean, I I can't remember. It's, 40% completion percentage, I think, I heard from Big Blue Kickoff Live. I think it was. I mean, it was, it was not very good at all. Now, like I said, I mean, you know, you look, I mean, he, he has like over 800 yards passing. 851, I think it is. I think um, he has four touchdowns, two interceptions. You know, so he's, he's 283 yards a game. You know, very, very, you know, absolutely respectable. But you know, one of the things is, is, you know, it's, it's, you know, when you're down, it was 28 to six. I think they were down against the Ravens, you know, in the fourth quarter, you're not running the ball. You got to throw the ball when you're down. Was it 44 to 19 or 45 to 19? When you're losing by like 30 points at home, 
Guess, guess what? You're not running the ball. You're throwing the ball. So all he's doing, you know, of course, all he's doing is, is, you know, it's junk time. You know, he's padding his stats with all these, you know, right? Um, and and against against the Browns, I don't think they did. Well, he he didn't go off on the Browns passing yardage wise. He did a lot against the Saints and a lot against the uh, the Ravens because he had to throw the ball, right? But if we if we can get some, I mean, their and their offensive line is not what it used to be. It's it's right. It's it's not that offensive line from years past, right? It's it's taken a step backwards. So if we can get some pressure on them, um, you know, and we can control their running game, you know, once again, we can't get blocked field goals, run back for a touchdown, can't throw pick sixes. Motor Singletary, they know he's from, he's been fumbling the ball. They're going to be out there punching the ball, grabbing it, whatever they got to do to get, get the ball out of his hands. So he's got to, he's got to hold on to that ball. Right. Um, one of our problems is that, unfortunately, as I'm going to go over in a, in a minute, a couple minutes here, is that, that you know, the, the coverage that we're going to wind up having on ABCD Lamb. That's going to be because he's usually a lot of times in the slot. Now, we're not, Banks is going to be out wide. Who's covering him? Do we maybe get Simmons on him? Huh? Huh? Don't know. But whoever whoever's covering uh, ABCD is going to have, going to have their hands full. Um, no, he's it's going to be tough. I saw this thing. Four things. What to expect? Oh, no, 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 no. Where are we at here? There we go. Four things to watch in the Cowboys. Now, this is pretty good. Cowboys Giants game. Says so here. One thing is Dak Prescott. The Cowboys must finish more offensive drives. The Cowboys offense ranks in the top ten in several metrics, including points scored. But they've gone dormant for long stretches, or not finished off drives in every game, finding themselves in three score holes to pass two. Yeah, their kicker. Aubrey, uh, I mean, he kicked, I think, a 312-yard field goal last week. So, basically, they get to, like, midfield. I mean, if need be, he can come out and maybe boom a field goal if they're at midfield, which is unbelievable. Um, let's see. Prescott leads the NFL in pass yards, but also has taken three sacks in each game. And is currently at a career-low completion percentage of 60% which is very low for him. Usually he's in like in the upper 60s. Um, of course, then you got uh, obviously ABCD Lamb. Uh, let's see. The Giants are banged up, which I said we're going to go We're going to go over. Um, you know, I so said the, the, the key thing would be get, get some pressure on, on, on Dak. Get some pressure on him. The next thing here is Malik Neighbors for the Giants. Giants fans have gotten a taste the past two games of what their first round wide receiver is capable of. He helped dig the Giants out of a quick 7 0 deficit, catching two first half TD passes against the Browns, both spectacular. And also made another great reception to save Jones from an interception. After a bad week one, Jones has rallied alongside his rookie stud. Over the past two games, he's thrown four for four touchdowns and zero picks, taking only three sacks and scrambled effectively. Neighbors has energized Jones and Wondell Robinson gives him a nice safety blanket and a, and a yak threat. Good old Wondell. But running back Devin Singletary is the only other giant skill player who has touched the ball more than 11 times. We got to, we got to spread it out. You know what I mean? So their options are limited. A giants. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, See, Hyatt has been like, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, he's like been like car 54. Where are you, Jalen, right? Um, and uh, we're going to go over, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, Slayton. He's got a problem with his thumb, so hopefully he can go. Our tight ends have been on the field, but they're, they're, they've been doing a lot of blocking. I think we have four receptions from our tight ends. They're all seeing the field, right? But we got four receptions from our tight ends in three games.
you know. So it seems like oh, what they're trying to get a lot of a lot of two tight ends in there quite often. And, you know, at least a lot of times, like, leave maybe one of them in to, to help block, to get Daniel Jones to keep him upright, also to get him comfortable, but also, I mean, you know, to get his confidence back and to do a good job, right? Instead of flooding the zones with five receivers, Daniel Jones is in there trying to make a quick decision, you know. I think they want to give him some time. Uh, obviously, to give, make the right decisions, but to start building his confidence back up as well, too. So that might be one of the reasons why we don't have uh, a lot of receptions from our tight ends. Also, I mean, if we had Waller in, you know, you know, if we had Waller still, you know, keep him Waller. Hey, hey, Darren, you just block. Hey, we don't need you to catch, but you know what I mean. Our thing was, is you know, if Waller was to be healthy. And if Waller didn't retire, you know, so we kind of like in kind of one way, we lost like two threats. And we only picked up one. So in the threat department, we might be like minus one. We got Malik. But the two threats we lost, I don't want to say aged, but are a little long in the tooth. That's what they call me. My, my teeth are long because my gums receding. When you're older, they say you're a little long in the tooth. So we lost two long in the tooth players, meaning Saquon and Waller, but we picked up one young stud who's hopefully, knock on wood, stays injury free, right? Could be a stud for long, especially, it seems like he has a nice head on his shoulders, unlike Odell Beckham Jr., okay? So hopefully, if he stays injury-free and all that stuff, I mean, we got ourselves a stud for a long, long time. So, you know, you know, the Waller, we lost him. If he's healthy and all, he's a mismatch. We lost Saquon, right? When healthy, out of the back, when he catches the ball out of it. But, you know, he helped the, the Eagles win the game against the Saints. He took one to the house, right? So, you know. He's better than, he, he, you know, he, he's more of a threat than, than Motor. Motor, Motor's average, I think, more, maybe more yards per carry, I think. But he's, he also has has more guys, has more forced more missed tackles, I think, than Saquon. But he's also fumbled twice. But but um, Saquon is the threat. You hand him, turn around and hand him the ball. He's more of a uh, threat to go all the way than Motor is. But then again, the Eagles paid three times the amount of money that the Giants did for Motor. But anyway, so we kind of lost two threats, right? But we picked up one young stud. So, you know, we, you know, we, we need, you know, we need another threat, at least another, you know. Because, you know, what happens when a real good defense goes out there and really does a good job blanketing Malik? Well, you can throw the ball to him 50-50s and all, but... Or what happens, God forbid, he gets injured. <clears throat> so we need, you know, some, we, you know, it's not happening this year, but we need, we need another threat, definitely. But if the Giants can, you know, no turnovers, nothing, you know, no, no block field goals, run back for touchdown like it did last year. Uh, if we can keep running the ball, uh, if we can stay in the game and, and, and continue to run the ball in the third and fourth quarter, uh, you know, hey, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Uh, they've won 13 out of the last 14 against this. It feels like it's even been more than that. But, um, yeah, somewhere along the line, the Giants have got to win. Yeah. I just hope it's a good game. I mean, I, I just – those 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 two games last year were just really, really, really tough to watch. And um, – I heard somebody say, and it's kind of maybe kind of in a way true, for the playoff aspirations of either one of these teams, tomorrow's a huge game. If the Cowboys go to one and three, ooh, wow. The Giants go to one and three, you know, I don't want to say the season's over, but with the tough games we got coming up and all and everything, it's, you know, if we can't beat the Cowboys at home, 
We got two coming up against the Eagles, and then obviously we got the Steelers and all that. Yeah, so yeah, the playoff aspirations for both these teams. Um, tomorrow night's game is absolutely freaking huge. I think it should be a good one. I don't. I don't see. I, I. I don't see the Giants running away with this with the game at all. If anything, you know, if anybody's gonna, you know, win by double digits, I can see it being the Cowboys. If the Giants were to win, I could see them winning whatever, you know, whatever, 24, 20, 27, 20, for something, something along those lines. I, I. I don't think the Giants would be totally shut out in this one, not like they were last year, because I think we only scored seventeen points in our two games last year. I think I can see the Giants scoring some points here and keeping it close, and hopefully it'll be interesting. Uh, I just, good God, I just hope it ain't like it was in um, week one last year. I guess that was oh, ungodly horrible. 